Hey guys, welcome to the smoking video that I'm going to do with the Baby XL Smoker. This is my favorite smoker in the world. It's called a gravity fed system. It's by Stump. There's a few other kinds of gravity fed systems, but he's really the creator of it. So it's just the best. I've had this smoker for about four years. And let me just show you a little bit how it works and what it means by when we say gravity fed. So what happens if you'll take a peek up at the top here, there's a hatch. Now when you look in that hatch, you'll see that there's an opening and there's a whole chute that goes all the way down into the grate. So if you'll just kind of follow down here, you'll eventually get to the firebox. And we'll just open that up and take a peek here. In the firebox, you'll see there's a grate here. And I won't pull it out because if I did, all of the charcoal that's in there would come out. But the very lowest layer of charcoal will light. And then as that charcoal burns and turns into embers and ash, those embers will fall into this box. And this is where we'll place a chunk of wood. And just from a few embers falling on, a piece of wood will give you all the smoke that you could ever desire. And then, of course, as that, that layer burns, then it just naturally brings the nether layer, the next layer, and it lights it. And the advantage of this is that the smoker can burn on a chute, depending on your temperature, of course, but it can burn on a whole chute for sometimes 10 to 15 hours, especially if you're doing some low smoking. And so the other thing I want to point out here is that what I like to use, if you look here in the in this firebox, you'll see that there's a valve. It's just a big ball valve. And uh, the valve is, if it's closed, then that closes off the oxygen. But the more you open it, the more likely the heat is going to increase. Now, what I like to do is I like to open it all the way and then use, like many people do, a fan. And the fan is connected to a computer. And the computer, of course, has a cord that goes inside the smoker. So it's monitoring the temperature. And it's really just a good way for the computer to keep the temperature exactly where you want it for hours on time, which is very, very good, particularly if you have to smoke through the night. You can really trust the fan to just manage the temperature all night so you don't have to be here all the time. So now let's just get some meat ready and put some put some meat on this smoker, the Baby XL smoker. So let's go ahead now and get the meat ready for the smoke. So here we have just your classic, I always call it a Boston butt, it's called by many names as I said earlier. And the first thing I want to do is really dry it off. Now I'm just a fan of using disposable things like paper towel, it's very absorbent. Some of you might want to use something different, it really doesn't matter, but just trying to get, get the meat somewhat dry, not perfectly dry. What we want to do is put dry rub on it. We want the dry rub to basically get liquid in it so it gets into the meat. We don't want to put dry rub on something and then put it into the smoker because all that will happen is the dry rub will actually just burn. So we want it to moisturize and get kind of, a, kind of wet looking and so we want to do that. Well, one thing that I like to do, and, and sometimes this is controversial for people, is I like to use just a little bit of mustard. Mustard has a very interesting uh, advantage when you rub it on a meat. First of all, the mustard flavor itself does not come through, so you don't need to worry about that. But because mustard has so much vinegar in, it has a tendency to open up pores and just receive both the flavor of the rub, but also the flavor of the smoke. So anytime you put vinegar on any kind of a meat, just a little bit, it causes the flavors to be able to go in through those greater sized pores and give the meat much, much more flavor. But in this case, it also has the added advantage of being able to make the meat wet, but not just simple wet, like with water or blood, but wet in a way that makes the rub stick to it. So I don't have to put very much on it. Now you'll notice at the bottom here, I'll just take a peek at that, is that it's got a fat cap on it. This fat cap is not very big, but sometimes it's very, very, thick and can go over the meat this way. But in this case, um, we don't have to do anything with the fat cap. We want to just keep it. I'll probably cook this side down. Because there's a little bit of meat exposed back here, I will go ahead and prepare that side too for the rub. And so I'll prepare all sides of this meat and uh, it's pretty easy. Okay, you do have to be a little bit careful. Sometimes there's bones sticking out. And here's a classic one right here. Is this bone is very, very sharp. And as you rub yourself, I just felt that as I was rubbing. Uh, luckily, I didn't end up with an injury and there's no blood on the meat. So I think we're good. Okay, so here we are. And now that we're fairly wet, we'll put the mustard aside. And now we're going to use this rub. This is a dry rub. It's really a basic rub. I have some variations on it, but you could find this recipe almost anywhere. And the thing you want to remember is don't put your hand on the pork and in the rub. And so in this case, I'll just pour some of the rub on there. And we don't have to worry about putting too much. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely spread it liberally. And, and uh, so I'll put some on the side. 
and then just keep going. Now I won't rub it in a whole lot, just a little bit, and then I'll just do all the sides in the same way. Pretty easy. Again, I don't go crazy on the fat cap um, because that's not where any flavor is going to get in at all. I say that, I mean flavor from the smoke or even the flavor from the, uh, from the rub. But the fat itself does have a ton of flavor, and so we do like to keep that, that on there. And now I have a little bit extra here so I can kind of gather this up and just make sure my pork roast is getting all that it needs to. Now once we've done that, then the next thing we need to do is we need to string it. If you don't string it, this meat is going to become so tender over the course of its cooking that it really does want to fall apart. When we pull this thing, it'll be easy to pull. We don't have to use tools or forks or anything. We'll just be able to pull it with our hands. And so in order to keep it all together, I'll just cut a piece of string and I'll truss it just a couple of ways. I say truss, that's really not the right word. I'm just going to tie it. I'm not going to do a formal trussing, if you know what that is. And so we'll do that, and uh, we just want to keep the meat from just falling apart at any given time. And so there's, there's one that way. And sometimes I'll put one or two in, in both directions. In this case, I think I'll use three pieces of string, and I'll just tie all three of those. That's probably going to be enough. So we'll tie these. I don't have to get it particularly tight, just a little bit. A lot of times I'll have somebody, somebody nearby, and I'll have them actually uh, put their finger here so I can get it somewhat tight. But uh, in this case, I think I can probably I think I can probably manage. Okay, and then I'll just put the other piece of string here as well. I probably would do better if I were to cut my strings first so that I didn't mess up the whole roll with all the schmutz that's on my hands. But that'll be, that'll be just fine. So do that. Okay, and then that's pretty much all we need to do. Now this is the fat cap. If you look closely here, you definitely have the fat cap there. I'm going to be putting it on the grill with a fat cap down. Uh, that's probably going to burn a little bit, but that's okay. That's all going to just slough off whenever we go to pull it. And that's all we need to do. You can see here as you look at this that here's the dry rub that I put on, but already there's moisture from the meat into uh, the rub itself, and that's what we want. So you have to let it sit. I like to let it sit for probably a good 30 minutes or so but at least a little bit so it looks like you can't see the dryness of the spices. And so this pork is ready to go on the smoker.